Well, I've heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. But you don't really hear the music, do ya? Well, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall and the major lift, the holy king composing. Faith was strong, but you needed proof. You saw her shining on the roof, her beauty and the moonlight overthrew ya. She tied you to her kitchen chair, and she made your throne, and she combed your hair, and from your lips she drew the hallelujah. But baby, I've been here before I've seen this room and I've walked this floor You know I used to live alone before I knew ya And I've seen your flag on the marble lodge And love is not a victory march It's a clear and unbroken Therefore, I am loved. Take a moment to check in with your body. Is there any position, any movement your body is asking of you right now? Give yourself permission to place yourself into the perfect spot. 
a spot where your attention can marvel at the divine creation that is you. You who are the beloved. You who are the lover. You who are the embodiment of love itself. You who are divine. Let's take a journey into the ocean of loving creation within the heart. As you approach this ocean, what does it look like? What color is the sky? What does the shore look like? How is the landscape laid out before you? What color is the water? What is the water doing? How does it meet the shore? What sounds do you hear? What sensations do you feel in the touch of all that surrounds you? How is the temperature? Or the taste? How does this ocean feel? As you feel the sea, what are the messages this ocean of your heart has for you? What is the call of the heart? What emerges? What gift comes ashore? just for you. Be tender with all that arises in receiving the gift of your heart. Be tender and kind towards all that you feel and all that you are. You are a divine creation made of love itself. You are love through and through to the very core of you and beyond. How does it feel to embrace your divinity? To embrace this journey of coming home to yourself, coming home to love, coming home to God, coming home to peace and beauty and the life we divine creations create for ourselves and each other. the lives we create for God, with God, to serve God, to serve love and healing, to serve the tenderness of the heart. Be with all that arises in the tenderest spaces of the heart. 
hold this heart with your love and attention. Your love is a treasure. You are a precious gift. You are a blessing from God. Allow this love and blessings to permeate every pore of your skin, infusing your entire being with all of the love shared here today in this ocean and in this precious heart. Relax into the knowing you are loved for your very being. When you feel ready, take your time. Take any stretches or movements to carry your attention of love into the rest of your day. May you forever feel the blessings of how divinely loved you truly are. Welcome, my name is Christine and I will be doing today's card reading. So for this Sunday Services card reading, I'm using the deck Angels of Abundance by Doring and Grand Virtue. And the reason I picked this deck is because it's a beautiful reminder of all the abundance that God has for us. And I'm not just referring to the monetary abundance. It can be like abundance of love, abundance of joy, and of all these beautiful experiences that we can have on this spiritual journey when we are with God. So, so yeah, let's begin. First card is, have courage to ask for and accept help. Asking for help is a sign of strength, as is accepting it as it is offered to you. Very often when you ask God for help, prayers are answered through other people. Be sure to accept this assistance as well as give it to others as you are guided. So a really beautiful card because sometimes we might feel that asking for help is a sign of weakness, right? It's like, oh, why can't I figure it out? But um. We're not supposed to be figuring it out alone. That's a thing. And that's why we have spiritual communities, right? So, yeah. And it's very important to not be afraid to ask for help from God and to go to God for whatever is like on our mind. And God will always give us the perfect person or the perfect situation to help us out. And that also extends to asking for help from our fellow brothers and sisters in God, right? Because we're not separate from them. And, you know, it's safe to, like, ask for support when we need it. And um, it's also safe to help them and support them as we feel guided to, right? Because um, an important thing is not to, like, um, support others at your own expense, right? But um, support others because it feels good to you and as much as it feels good to you. So, yeah, that is uh, very important because anything done out of obligation is not really done out of love. It's just... <laughs> done out of obligation and it doesn't feel good but when you release the feeling of obligation of oh I have to help so and so you know or I have to do this yeah then you experience a lot of joy and a lot of relief because yeah God doesn't want you to feel obligated right so another beautiful thing I notice in this card is how uh, if you can look closely at the artwork the races of the angels are a bit different and I feel like this is um, a beautiful reminder that no matter what the external differences might be, we're all the one child of God. So we can all come together, no matter what, and do great things together and support each other and uplift each other. So the next card is pay yourself first. Beautiful, confident angel. Make yourself your most important financial obligation by setting aside a portion of your income every time you're paid. This loving form of self-care ensures that you'll have savings to invest in your present and your future. So I feel this isn't only about um, savings in terms of money. I feel this is also about, um, you know, what do you do first thing when you wake up in the morning? Do you just grab breakfast, go to work and 
that's it or do you spend some time to connect with yourself and god because it is very important to take the time to fill your cup up especially at the beginning of its day so that you can have the energy to do the things that you desire to do right in your day uh, and give as much as you desire instead of feeling exhausted so yeah it's very important to take the time to do something to give to yourself even if that's 10 minutes of waking up a bit sooner to you know meditate a bit maybe pray or even read a book right so if that is what gives to you most then it's safe to go ahead and do that and yeah that's how you pay yourself first so you can continue and uh do whatever is needed during your day yeah and also um another way is savings like as the card mentioned like um but I would like to take this a step deeper. And I would say it's about doing anything you can to like make sure your future self is taken care of. So, for example, let's say that you have some dishes in the sink that, you know, you might be like, oh, I'll do it tomorrow, whatever. But, um, you know, if you instead take those five minutes to wash the dishes right now, then your future self doesn't have to worry about that at all. So even small things like that can really... Yeah, I can really give to you because you no longer have to like worry about those dishes when you come back home from work and you want to like rest instead or do something else. So yeah, very important thing to really pay yourself first, like give to yourself first, and then you'll be able to like give even more and have high levels of energy throughout the day because of that. And last but not least, the final card is Windfall of Abundance, and it's Santa Claus with all these beautiful animals. An increase in abundance is arriving in many different forms, some of them unexpected. Be open to receiving and know that this abundance comes to support your life purpose, health and charitable work. So I feel like there's an order to these cards. First, like to have courage to accept and ask for help from others and like pay yourself first, give to yourself and then like you receive all this abundance, this windfall. And that's really beautiful, right? Because the more you give to yourself, the more you can actually receive. So one point uh, that is coming up from the card is to make sure that you are choosing to receive, that you're balanced here. You don't have to just give, give, give and never receive anything back, right? It's important to have this balance. So, you know, when you receive, you're properly rested and then you can like go do more things the next day, serve God more. So, yeah, that's um, something to prioritize your self-care. Making sure you have enough food, enough sleep, enough water. <laughs> Those are very good ways you can like give to yourself and thus receive all this like even more abundance in your life and like being open to receiving means that you are not attached to what this abundance looks like it might be you know an unexpected evening with friends that you really love and that you have a lot of fun that's one form of abundance right or um you know a date with your twin flame an abundance of love and romance right so all those beautiful things and yeah, it's also safe to receive because when you receive you can also give more and like extend and expand your life purpose work and like yeah giving your gift to the world so this week i feel it's a good time to consider how we can like grow more how we can give to ourselves more for that purpose and um yeah how we can serve god more so this was this Sunday services card reading. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy the rest of the Sunday service and the rest of your week. Hello everybody and welcome to our Sunday service today. Thank you for joining us. My name is Granville Campbell and it is my pleasure to introduce the sermon by Lorenzo and Alexandra today on the topic of embracing the unknown. And having watched the sermon, I feel like it's a really cool message to receive right now. Um, I feel like there's a lot of transitional energy happening at the moment. And so there's a lot of change. And in that change, I sometimes feel like personally, I have been in the space where I need to know, like I'm, I'm one of those people that kind of wants to know. And so I, I kind of have to sit back and just understand that it's safe to not always know. And it's safe to kind of embrace what's happening and take the step in front of me 
and see how that pans out. And it's one of the messages that they share quite deeply in terms of their journey and what they are working through right now as we get closer to the Sedona event in October. Um, one of the things that has been quite interesting for me as well is just in my life, I've always been in the space of not liking change. And so sitting in the safety of knowing and sitting in the safety of not necessarily being uncomfortable, not necessarily being comfortable with exploration. And so I feel like this, the sermon just kind of helped me ground that energy of feeling into the space of where I'm still not completely allowing God to lead and allowing God to present those new steps to me and being okay with not knowing the step after that. Like literally taking, the, taking that step that's right in front of me um, in the space of knowing the next step will be revealed to me. And one of the most profound things that you know, comes through the sermon is just, again, going deeper into trust and going deeper into faith with God and going deeper into the relationship with God. And what I liked about what Larencio and Alexandra share is the sense that as you take that step, you show God that you can be trusted with the next step. And as, as that happens, your faith kind of just seems, seems to grow. And it feels much more fitting not to be in the space of wanting to control things all the time. So the thing that stands out for me is just how powerfully surrendered they feel in sharing the sermon on embracing the unknown. And it's quite a fitting lesson in that it releases the pressure. For me, it releases the pressure at least. It, it allows me to relax and understand that it's okay to embrace the discomfort. It's okay to be in a space where the comfort zone is the thing I need to leave. And also the comfort zone is potentially the thing that was holding me back in the first place. So I feel like as we go through life's journey, there are a lot of unknowns. And one of the things that has been a thing for me in life is not wanting to embrace a risk for the fact that I didn't know where that was leading. And I think that that's kind of the energy that has been kind of in the background of my life quite a bit. And so having felt into the sermon and feeling into the message, I feel like it's just a perfectly grounding space for me as, I've, as I'm also kind of feeling like life's changing and things are changing and it's okay to allow the change to take place. It's okay to allow myself to feel through my feelings in this space of change. And so I feel like the sermon has come at the perfect time for many of the changes that we're not only seeing in our community, but potentially in the changes that we are individually going through and what that, what that would feel like. And also, you know, um, the, another thing that kind of stands out is just the sense that the illusion is not real. And I, I, I like how Alexandra and Lorenzo share the different sides of the journey that they have had to work through in terms of embracing the unknown, specifically related to the Sedona event coming up in October. Um, I think. Many of us are in a very similar position, not understanding, not knowing whether we'll be able to travel 
given the COVID restrictions, but also understanding that as we choose to partner with God and, and embrace what God is putting in front of us, God will show up for us, which is the thing that Lorenzo and Alexandra share quite a bit in terms of when you show up for God, God shows up for you. And so, yeah, you know, it's just, it's been, for me, a very fitting sermon and kind of fortuitous right now in my life that I get to experience the sermon because it does help me to just also relax into what is happening around me and within me right now. And I love how they share that they had to work through their feelings and how they also share a quote from Jeff and Shalia around, if you knew who was walking, pardon, who was walking next to you, you wouldn't be afraid. You would have nothing to fear. And it's also something that Jeff and Shalia took us through in this last Sunday class in terms of just working through your fears and allowing God to be there for you. And I love the example that they shared of God's outstretched hand. And that all we need to do is actually take God's hand and allow God to lead us. And that space of allowing also feels peaceful because it's a much more powerfully surrendered space. It's a much more peaceful space in that everything's not on me. And that's what it, that's, that's really something that feels very comfortable just to allow God to be there for me, to allow myself to be with God. And so, yeah, it's, an, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's just a powerful invitation to surrender into God's embrace and surrender into God's lead. Um, it's also a powerful invitation to just relax into life's journey and so yeah it's you know like feeling into it it just feels so much more peaceful and so much more comfortable to just kind of let go in the space and be peaceful in the space and so the invitation is there for all of us to just relax more leave the comfort zone more Hold God's hand more. Trust God more. And in trusting God more, it might even just allow us to enjoy the journey more. So yeah, my, my invitation is to, to you is to sit back today and just experience the sermon by Lorenzo and Alexandra and just survey your life. Survey how you're feeling right now and allow God to minister to you through Lorenzo and Alexandra. So thank you again for joining us and I will see you after their sermon. Hello, I'm Lorenzo. And I am Alexandra and we are today's ministers for this Church of Union Sunday's service. Let us begin with our three opening homes and with our opening prayer. Follow along, around, or in your mind. I am the only child of God, forever part of Him. I am created by Him in perfection, and there I always remain. My mind is my sanctuary, where I keep His holy creation sacred. I will only allow in His voice. 
I will only accept His word. Today I will hear the word of God. I surrender myself to His teachings through His divine channel. I will honor what He has spoken and accept it at His will. I will be obedient to His word, for this is my salvation. In Christ's name, um, um, Amen. amen. Perfect. Uh, so thank you everyone for joining us. Today we're going to speak about um, embracing the unknown. And it's a subject that um, kind of chose after we, we thought about it, what we're going to speak about again. And uh, this time we, we really thought about this process of like um, following along with the unknown and sharing about our, one experience where we had to really like embrace the unknown because we really didn't know what's going to happen or how we're going to do things. Mm -hmm. So first of all, like um, the unknown, everybody knows uh, that place that you just don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's next. You don't know. You just don't know what to do. <laughs> uh, well, in that moment, um, it's just like you, you really have to understand that it's a process first of all and there are always steps and sometimes even a step of trusting that uh, trusting God you know trusting that uh, what you have right now it's enough that's that's part of the process and uh, it takes takes some courage yeah um, yeah, but before I go into like our story, because I would like to speak about that, do you have anything else about the norm that you'd like to share? Yeah, I think it's um, it's a thing that you know can scare us. You know, when when we are used to live in in a certain way, um, because in order for us to face the unknown, um, we have to make like a choice to to grow and you know go out of our like comfort mm. zone right so whenever we go out of like our comfort zone we will face the unknown and we don't know what's gonna happen in the unknown that's why it's the, the unknown right <laughs> so um that's where you know as Lawrence you said a lot of trust comes in and a lot of, of faith in god you know that as you uh, burst through the bubble of the comfortable into the maybe like some uncomfortable zones mm -hmm. in your life that you are guided into well uh, that uh, process is going to ultimately help you grow and uh, become stronger something mm -hmm. that you know jeff and shidia always encourage us is to not wish for an easy life but to wish for um the power to overcome every mm -hmm. every challenge that comes our way so you know, overcoming uh, the unknown or embracing the unknown, it's um, you know a process that requires for you to really claim your power and partner deeper with God and also surrender control uh, because yeah. um, you cannot really go into this place of unknown if you're uh, like controlling. It requires your surrender. It requires your faith. It requires your um, devotion to God to to face these places um, in a safe way and knowing that you will be loved there. Facing the unknown mm. and embracing the unknown is not something that should be, um, I believe like it should be necessarily scary, right? I think like we are used for it to be scary because we are like in uh, as I said, like in this comfortable space, but mm -hmm. as we uh, realize and go deeper in our relationship with God, um, it should be actually thrilling because you're mm -hmm. you're deepening your relationship with God. And I think like Jeff and Shania said this in a class and it really stuck with me and I was like, yeah, facing the unknown is, you know, you um, going deeper in your relationship with God and that's where you're actually like surrendered and allowing God to, mm -hmm. you know, um, guide you and take the wheel of, of your life. And um, yeah, because we don't know what's uh, the best path for us, only, only God knows truly. So um, it's actually um, a natural state for us to be like surrendered, right? And possibly facing a lot of unknown. Mm. Yeah, I really love what you said. And I wanted to actually ask you because like something came to my mind. Would you say that going uh, for the first time in the roller coaster, it's kind of like facing that? No. 
<laughs> She's trolling me right now. <laughs> yes, yes, please. <laughs> she, I didn't do good on roller coaster. Let's say. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still embracing the unknown when it comes to that. I didn't do good, you know, in Toronto. You, you, That's <laughs> it's okay, you, you did good. I have to like start, you know, like it's uh, with a medium level, I think. <laughs> of the unknown. <laughs> of the unknown. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so now we have levels of the unknown. Level. Well, you know, it's, you know, as you said, it's about going out of your comfort zone. So therefore, um, one thing that's also important, you know, when you go and, you know, face the unknown and go outside of your comfort zone is be careful not to like unbalance yourself, mm -hmm. right? Because it can be very easy to uh, push yourself to the limits where you actually break yourself in some way. Don't, don't do that. It's safe to, you know, um, maybe face the unknown and... Um, Go outside of your comfort zone, maybe in a comfortable way, in a way that you mm -hmm. know you don't push yourself um, in a way that might be detrimental for you. Yeah, let's say like don't push yourself in a way that's not compassionate for mm -hmm. you and your journey yeah, and where exactly. you are in that moment. Because even though in, in truth you cannot break, mm -hmm. you can still like unbalance yourself by being uncompassionate with yourself and with your situation and where you are on your journey. Because... Uh, one thing that comes to mind when when some when someone would do that would be if they believe they're in a different place than they are. Mm -hmm. So that's something more like. Uh, well, that's a lesson that you have to learn. Yes, if you so believe that you have wings and you're gonna fly towards the sun, as some guy we might know, well, <laughs> maybe it's not uh, like not real wings, not right? like wings made of wax. Hmm. Something might happen that's not really nice, you know, but also that's also a lesson that you you learn so ultimately see that even you know something happens when you face the unknown and maybe you're going you know all in and you hurt yourself or do something stupid um, hmm. well you learned you learn from that experience and you are actually safe nothing can um, happen to you that you know would break you as mm. you said like that's not real you cannot be yeah. put down like you are a powerful child of god and nothing can take you down yeah you will just have to probably heal a bit in that area yeah of course you'll you'll have to like recuperate and go yeah. through the process of healing of course um but yeah and we obviously don't recommend that just just saying but if it mm. happens or if it has happened for you it's okay, you, you just have to know you're going through the process of feeling or you have healed from that experience and that's okay, you know, it's um, like one of the, like you, you mentioned, you know, compassion, right? Mm -hmm. Have compassion with yourself and also forgive yourself where you might have, you know, pushed yourself too hard in some areas. Uh, forgive yourself because um, you, you learn more about yourself and your own relationship with God and it's safe to do that. Um, Good. Ultimately. Yeah, and I feel like this leads into uh, be okay with making mistakes in the unknown. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, just be okay. Like, you, you're learning. You're learning how to uh, go through this process of unknown. And that's okay. We, we're all learning. And as Alexandra said, what we want to get to is more like uh, mm -hmm. really trusting, really embracing it and really having a be thrilled about it, even if you're not thrilled right now. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can heal through that so you can surrender, you know, something that always comes up when I'm growing through situation like this, where maybe I'm facing the unknown and I'm a bit uncomfortable about what's going to happen and I don't know. Well, I'm, it always comes back to like, um, a quote from Jeff and Shania, like, remember who's walking beside mm. you. You know, if you knew who walks beside you, you would have no fear, right? I'm not sure if it's Jeff and Shania said, I know Jeff and Shania said this, but I don't know if they quoted it from somewhere else. So, mm. sorry if, if that happened. Uh, but, you know, if you knew that, you know, the power of God and that God stands beside you at every step and all that you have to do is just trust and have faith in God, you'd mm. have no fear no matter how... Uh, big you know the ravine might look in front of you and you see it's endless and there's no bridge and it, it it there seems no way for you to move uh past it but you know god is next to you and god has a way mm. 
Yeah, and you got into a different point of mind that uh, was later on the list, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah. um, we're gonna just uh, move on. Embrace the unknown. Embrace the As you're shooting the sermon. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, and like a point that Alexander just said now that's very, very important is really trust God and really trust God completely in this process because, mm -hmm. um, you know, just now I, I remember something. Uh, where did this came from? Like, just uh, choose to take God's hand, I think, mm -hmm. in the Bible or... I know, there was somewhere where basically it was like, uh, when you are in the dark, just choose to take God by the hand and God will lead you mm -hmm. forward. I think Jeff Eshla somewhere in the class has said that. Yeah. And I, I really love that because, um, yeah, like when you're in the dark, when you're maybe scared, maybe you feel like alone, remember that God is already next to you. And all that you have to do is just grab God by the hand mm -hmm. and let him uh, guide you. And yeah. no matter what happens, no matter what you see in the known, don't let go of God's hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It kind of remembers me about like that uh, painting with Adam and God. We we have references, we just don't know because they just come to us right now. So if we say something wrong, I'm sorry. It's the painting, you know, where you, with the hands, you know, and I really like how there was an explanation. I think like Jeff also shared this. I don't know if he explained this or shared this. I, I think where it was in a post. It, it was in a post that he made some while ago where he said, you know, that God's hand is always extended to the maximum, right? And mm -hmm. if you look closely at the painting, you would see that's actually Adam and he, or like the person in the painting, I think it's Adam, but bear with me. is <laughs> the man, you know, who doesn't extend his arm fully, you know, who has the arm relaxed and all that he has to do is just extend it further, you know, do that push to really touch God and be in in that space with God and mm -hmm. really grab God by the hand, as you said. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you, you can you always have um, God at your fingertips. Mm. <laughs> that sounds a bit funny. But yeah, that's true. But that's embracing that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, that feels really good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good. Good. That's uh, very good. And I would like next to really share about one of our experiences that we had to face the known constantly. It was uh, it was a journey, <laughs> <laughs> and the journey started with um, us wanting to make our visa or to U.S. visa, you know, to go to the yes, settlement US visa. and just to give like a little bit of okay. background for the people that don't know us or don't yes, know what's happening. Yes. You know, we. There's the Sedona event that happens in October. It's in Sedona, Arizona. And of course, for us who are like in Europe, Romania, we need, you know, a US visa to, to go there. So it's the first time that we go through any kind of process like this. So it was a, a journey of embracing the unknown mm -hmm. all the way through. Yes. And in this process of uh, embracing the known, first of all, like, um, there was like just a form to complete that was just like quite a terror for me when I started because it was unknown, I didn't understood what was there. So it was a process of learning and just like relaxing into that. And I have to admit it was just like at every moment I just uh, felt like I had a pool like, you know, that's scared, you know, think about a little kid, I just get scared of it. And then like wanting to pull back my hand and then then I would just get uh, God's hand again and then I would just like walk again until I finally completed that. But even in that process there were still elements of unknown that I had to face. Mm -hmm. And in that journey I just learned that um, just keep moving forward, keep God by the hand and even if it feels uncomfortable, you're gonna get there. And we, we got to the moment, we finished that, we understood and then we move forward and we had another process of like scheduling uh, when when the um, interview is gonna be and the interview is not in our city so we had to prepare for that we had to get clear but uh, first of all like uh, the appointments for it were uh, starting from uh, I think the moment when we actually looked at November mm -hmm. from November and the uh, you know event is in October, yes. so it's a bit too late for us, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. 
So in that process, we're like, okay, what do we do now? It, it looks like nothing is going to work. And God was guiding us, hey, just keep moving forward, keep, you know, feeling about this. And mm-hmm. we noticed at some point that the, the schedule kind of changed the date. There was like at some point October again. And we're like, okay, something is happening there. And yeah, so we noticed like the schedule wasn't like fixed. It, it was kind of like shifting some days later, some days earlier. It, it wasn't like fixed, right? So, um, yeah, we said, okay, let's just go forward with the process because when we saw this for the first time, I think like it's important to notice, mm. we didn't have like the full, full process done, right? Mm. We actually had to like uh, pay a fee and go to like more of the process so we could actually schedule the interview. Um, we didn't do that at that point and we saw like, oh, it's too late, right? So I saw how that, you know, was an invitation for us to like give up. It mm-hmm. was easy for us to give up at that point and be like, nope, well, it's too late. I'm sorry, you know, bye. Mm-hmm. You know, there's also like fees involved and everything, you know, you have to make an investment, right? So we were like, okay, no, that's that's not how God works. You know, we, we, we have to get like this interview, right? So we, we pay the fee. Mm-hmm. and did all the rest of the process that needed and then we finally got wait, wait. And, until we got there there's mm-hmm. still something okay yeah here you go so before that like there was still a process that happened and it was like we had a session with our coaches and at that point it was just jason that was helping us mm-hmm. we moved through some feelings and then i had like after that session i just felt like hmm, i should probably go through dreams coming through and romance attraction and that's what I did. I went. And again, for those of you who don't know, uh, dreams coming true is like twin flames. Dreams coming true. It's an e-course made by Jeff and Shulia. You can find it at twinflamesuniverse.com. And the same with twin flames romance attraction. You can find it at twinflamesuniverse.com. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I went through the first two lessons of uh, both courses in in that day. Like right after the session, I felt like the desire to go through them and really like claim my good mm-hmm. and so i did and i know like there was um as i went through them and i did the exercises in uh, romance attraction 2 i know there was an exercise that really i loved it a lot which was just imagining you growing into what you desiring basically blossoming into your full potential in that, that's the best source that I could use, yeah. And in that meditation that I did with myself, I just saw myself like receiving the visa, going to the US, to Southern Arizona, uh, to the event, seeing everybody else, and just like uh, expanding more and more, seeing myself just keep blossoming. And it felt really good into my heart, and I just like felt a lot of joy. And I was like, okay, that, that feels really good. Now, now let's... <laughs> Now let's see what's, um, uh, let's check again, you know, the, um, the dates and would you like to take it from here? Yeah. So I think it was very important to know, to say like afterwards we, we paid fees, we, we had everything ready mm-hmm. for us to actually see the actual dates for the interview. So Laurentiu, you were on the website to schedule the interview and what did you see? Well, I saw that the first available, um, appointment was in 9 uh, August August okay. yeah August. on the 9th of August the 9th of August which was like oh my god <laughs> from November to August that that was that was huge one week almost one week later than less yeah. than one week away from when when we were like doing this yeah exactly and to just like share a bit more in, to see this in perspective uh, we we did pay that fee think a day before like we had the session and that process that mm-hmm. I had but like before this I was just like to be honest, I was just moving through my process and freaking out because I was like we're not gonna go to we're not gonna get to Sedona because like there's no availability to go there and now of course after the session I moved through it I felt better the um, that meditation and afterwards it was that moment that Alexandra said that we actually looked there and we were like oh my god there's actually like a uh, an appointment available in 9 August and we were very surprised I was very emotional about that I was like oh my god that's that's really nice 
was very surprised in the first place. <laughs> but uh, it felt really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then, you know, for me, there was like no date available. It was again back to the, the to November. Right? Wait, but for you, the process wasn't yet ready yet. Yeah, and for my, me, the process wasn't fully ready. But either way, when I got to that, that same point, like I didn't have like... Uh, and I was ready. We were doing it at the same time. No, no, you had... Um, no, we were doing it at the same time. No, if you remember, it had to do a day afterwards because of your uh, job when you... No. Yes, it was. Okay, whatever. <laughs> I, when I was at the point of scheduling, um, I, it was back to November, right? I mean, yeah, like afterwards, yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, afterwards, like we, we looked and it was, okay, when she was ready as well to go through that, there was nothing available, but we were hoping, like moving through the unknown again, mm -hmm. we had to face the known. Okay, we don't know what's going to happen, when she's going to have it, and there were feelings to move through. There was a lot of, um, there was the process. Mm -hmm. But um, then we, like, you know, I, I kept moving through, dreams coming through, and also romance attraction, and I moved through my feelings. I kept claiming my good and, um, yeah, that, that was my process and maybe you can share your process before. We... My process, well, was, I don't believe <laughs> that there is no date before that and that we will not make it to the interview. Mm. That was my process. I had other things to deal with. So I was just like, God, please help me. You know, I, I, I surrender. Whatever is going to happen, whatever is going to happen. I have to, to go through these things. I'm I'm with you. I don't believe in this illusion. I'm I'm ready. When <laughs> when you're ready, whenever you open the door, I'm gonna go through it, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, lo and behold, um, later, uh, right in the day that Laurentio had his um, train ride, you know. To I mean, it was kind of like uh, we, Monday. It was the moment when I had to go to the, the interview, yeah. and Sunday. No, actually, Saturday night, we were still awake. It was Sunday already. But it was Sunday already for Sunday us. Sunday morning. So on Sunday morning, Laurence, you looked again to see, you know, dates available. And lo and behold, a date opened up earlier. And it was the 10th of August. So one day after, like, Laurence's interview. And, of course, like, we scheduled it immediately. And we, uh, we did all that we could, you know, for us to, like, travel together. Because this was, like, a miraculous in like ways that we cannot even like describe mm -hmm. like we could have not made this ourselves we could have not asked for like a more perfect date alignment we like it was all like the hand of god you know and this is what happens when you you embrace the unknown and you choose to dive right into it you know god will show up for you god will always shows up for you when you just have faith and um, yeah, delve deeper into the unknown and choose to, to partner with God in whichever way, you know, God is guiding you to. Because at each and every step, you know, God was giving us, you know, steps. For Laurence, it was to, like, um, watch dreams coming through and almost interaction. For me, it was just don't believe in that and, you know, keep going with the things that you're doing. Um, so, um, we each and every one of us had, like... Um, Kind of like a, an assignment from God, and once you do that, and you know, complete that, and work mm -hmm. towards that, um, you know, you you will reap like the rewards. And yeah, you it was uncomfortable at times, you know, mm -hmm. to go through this process of you know going to the unknown, and you know, not really knowing what's gonna happen, and how things are gonna pan out, and maybe just Laurence is gonna go to Sedona. Maybe, you know, because the, just he, you know, scheduled the, the interview at first, right? So we had to move, like, um, a lot of things. However, um, in doing so, you know, God showed up, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, God sh really showed up for us as we just cleared whatever it was in front of us. Just put one step in front of the other. And that's all that you have to do in the known. Just put one step in front of the other and trust God that everything will go uh, the way he intended. Yeah, exactly. And really follow just the next step. Don't worry about what's three steps ahead of you or how things will look like later. Uh, 
just follow the step that God gives you right now. Um, I found like, you know, in doing this process, you know, you're just keeping it very, you know, grounded and um, you do have to take the step. Yeah. You do have to get out of your comfort zone. You do have to face the fears or face the feelings that you're feeling and just heal in that space and love yourself in that space. Um, in such a way, so you just take your next step forward. And as you take your next step forward, um, the next step is going to be revealed to you. And um, you, you're going to go to this process over and over again. And what was unknown will become known to you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think mm. it's, um, it's really beautiful to be in this state with God when you just take the next step as God is guiding you and just follow what he he's showing you all the time because mm. in this way um you're building your relationship with god even deeper and god can trust you more with um more awareness or like greater um greater love into your life mm. the moment yeah. that you show up for god you know god can trust you that he can like show up for you in full as well mm. and you really earn you know that um, you earn, you know, God's love even deeper. Mm. Yeah, that feels very good. Mm. Yeah. Good. I know we had some more things on our list to share, but uh, it's coming close to the time that we have to close. Yeah. So um, I think like it's it's safe to just say we're still in the unknown for us <laughs> yes. because even if we got to Bucharest and we had all of these amazing miracles on the way. Um, unfortunately, our um, requests have been like denied. So it has been as it it was like a, a shock. I think that we went through because everything another just, unknown another unknown, right? Because everything just panned out uh, beautifully until then. You know. However, um, we weren't denied for like no reason. God gave us the next step to work on, right? Mm -hmm. And this is what we're focusing on right now. And, you know, it's a journey. And I think this is maybe the last step that we want to mm -hmm. leave you off on is that uh, I don't think our journey in the unknown will ever end. So might as well yeah. get used to it. <laughs> and, and never give up. Even, and never give up, yeah. Even if it leads you to a place where you feel like you've done something wrong, don't, uh, don't let it get you down because it's just the next step for you to move forward. And mm -hmm. uh, it's just something that you learn. You, you're growing, you're learning. It's something natural. Until perfect yeah. union, we still have more to experience, to heal. So, yeah. And even afterwards, I know, maybe you're going to still be in the unknown. We're still going to learn in some ways. We're still mm -hmm. going to go deeper with God, right? So mm -hmm. it's a process and we're always going to be in this process in our deepening um deepening in our relationship with God. Mm -hmm. So therefore, um, it's safe for... Um, I think like the main point here that I, I want to, to make before we, we close is that mm. it's safe to delve into the unknown with God mm. and trust in God and have faith in God with whatever is being thrown at you in your journey because that's just the next step uh, for you to take is the next step that God sees fit for you right now. Um, if God shows you a challenge, it means that you're ready to take it. You're ready to overcome it. You're ready to learn that lesson. And God trusts you with that because otherwise he wouldn't put this challenge in front of you. He wouldn't ask you to go into that space. Um, God knows you best and God knows your power. So it's safe for you to know your power as well and raise up from, you know, fears or maybe hopelessness or um, powerlessness and um, raising to claim your, your power and being your true divine self. Mm. I love that. Good. Feel complete with that? Mm -hmm. Good. Now uh, we're going to move to the prayer. Mm -hmm. So for our closing prayer, Father, I accept your word into my heart. I will honor your will in my life and follow you without hesitation anywhere you ask. I know you guide me into your heart where I belong. I accept that you are everywhere 
and your teaching is in all things. God, I know you provide me clarity in this teaching of union that I may be forever in union with you. I accept that you are in me as you are in my brother. I will not deny my brother your word and will share your teaching with him in any way you ask and only as you ask. For when I share my salvation with him, I fully claim my salvation and return to you with him. In Christ's name, Amen. 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 Speaking this prayer in your heart means that you have accepted that you are on your path of awakening to your true divine nature. This is what it means to be a unionist. Follow the teaching of union with God wherever you find them and purify your consciousness into perfect union with your Creator. And now for our closing ohms, please follow along aloud or in your heart. Thank, Thank you, you so much for joining us today. Mm -hmm. We will see you next time. Yep. Hello again, everybody. So I hope you enjoyed that sermon by Lorenzo and Alexandra. I know that I did. I know that it's just allowed me to relax a little bit more and to just actually go deeper into trusting God in this space. And I hope that it has done that for you as well. So again, thank you for joining us. Um, also, we'd like to invite you to visit our unionism.org page where you will find all our past sermons, all our music and meditations and card readings. Um, you can also on the unionism.org page, donate or tithe to contribute to the Church of Union's message to the world. We'd also like to invite you to like and subscribe to our Church of Union YouTube channel, where you will find all our past sermons. You will also find any other live conversations that have happened in the Unionism Spiritual Discussion Group on Facebook. And so with that, I'd also like to invite you to join us for our after church tea time, which happens immediately after the sermon. It is a live discussion by a panel of unionists on the key takeaways from today's sermon and any other insights that they have on that, that, that they've received and experienced on their journey. And so, yeah, um, we'd like to thank you for joining us and we look forward to seeing you all again soon for another juicy sermon from the Church of Union. Thank you, everybody.